everybody to another vinyl blind date and I will keep the tradition and start opening a beer. It's a Hessenquell Landbier, <laughs> which is Hessian Fountain uh, out of town ale. No, this was not a good uh, translation. Yeah, you can't drink that in the town, you must drink that outside in uh, yeah villages like I live. I won't tell you the name of that village, even Manila Road posts <laughs> that name so often that some might know. But yeah, I want to keep that. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not uh, um, someone who is afraid of social media and I mean, I'm there all the time. But I think my address or my town uh, I don't want to have uh, female stalkers like, yeah, back in the days. <laughs> now let's try that Hessenquell Land beer. Oh yes, I like it. It has a, it's it's <laughs> not spicy in the sense of uh, pepper or something. It has a, a lot of taste. It's not uh, watery, I think that would be a good word, but it's not heavy. It's not uh, filling you up like a wheat beer. It's just a damn good natural uh, <laughs> a beer without trigger drums, I would say. It's really great. Yeah, I owe you uh, and now, Tomorrow there will be the release of the album Golden Core. I, I talk about Golden Core. The label I work for, Six Music. Now uh, I still owe you three unboxing videos. I know that. Cocoon. This is, uh, yeah, I think uh, I like this. Um, what this guy wrote in 2008 in a magazine. When Porcupine Tree and the Cranberries meet. So, yeah, that's. Back then I hated it, but uh, this description, but now I think it's a good slogan. Economist. One of the best bands from the 90s, Double CD, their complete work. For fans of Anna Cruz's Voivod uh, trouble during their uh, Rick Rubin days. Uh, some here, Ossie, also in there. It's, it's interesting. Uh, their complete work on two CDs, 1992 to 1995, including the unreleased album Mind Movies in its entire version. No, that's really great stuff and a really good looking drummer even here on the cover. <laughs> yeah. And of course, yeah, new, you haven't seen that now before, Pie Driver, the first out of six albums we release on Golden Core that are were released in 1980 or 1981 on labels, on the two labels Peak Records or Sri Lanka Records or SL Recordings sometimes. So, uh, yeah, I came up with that uh, slogan. I, I'm always on the hunt for slogans when I try to sell you something. And this is perfect. Uh, the the hard rocking 70s weren't really over yet, but the metallic 80s have not really, or, or no, have not already begun. And these six albums are somehow in, this slogan fits to all of those. This is really hard rock with a little boogie, I mean, pile driver. Yeah, a German band, of course, and uh, the first ones who used that name. So it's nothing Canadian in here. <laughs> yeah, I will do an unboxing video, hopefully with Requiem. Um, tomorrow is released, but I still don't have the CD. Come on, guys, guys and girls at six or girls and guys. I need it and then I will add this pile driver to the unboxing video because it fits well. And then I will do, whenever two of those six releases uh, are here, I will do a new unboxing video and I will wear some 80s clothes for you and look as sexy as possible. So yeah, I will try to make it fast before we, go, then we can start with the blind date. I have some new stuff. New stuff means discogs these days. No, no second-hand shops. We are in the lockdown in Germany still, and it goes on and on and on until I don't know. There is not one guy or girl left who 
is positively tested or something. I need to, yeah, try to not be sarcastic here and just don't talk about it. Weird situation, makes no sense. No. So here, from Discox, a tank, picture this, original. Tank, new wave of British heavy metal, you all know that. A Hawkwind 7 inch, ah, stop them, what was it? Uh, you better believe it and Paradox, I think, or? Yeah, Paradox. So on United Artists Records without a cover, so really old. It's even older. A German beat band that became even a little hard rock. Later, later means early 70s, the Pitars. And here's a commercial for the Pitars Langspielplatten, which means LPs. Langspielplatten. Oh no, Langspielplatten, LP. Long play in English. Really cool. That's German New Wave from the 80, early 80s, Ideal, a new wave of German. Uh, Neue Deutsche Welle, New German Wave, <laughs> uh, uh, Neue Deutsche Welle in German, you know, no, Trio, for example, this is ideal, ideal, with Monotonie in der Südsee, really cool, 80 cent on <laughs> discos, uh, I think this was 1 Euro 20, Rheingold with Fun Fun, Fanatisch, Fun Fun, Fanatisch, and they dance like this, the wheelies, Weird stuff. For some reason, I love that. Uh, it's a, it's a miracle why why I'm totally into this new German wave stuff, the earlier stuff. I don't like the commercial stuff like Fräulein Menke or so. John Fogerty, yeah, I have the zombie B side. Is I confess, a uh, uh, seven inch might be a promotion item. I'm not too sure. It's Bella from Germany, of course, the pressing, and yeah, I'm a fanboy. I mean, Creedence is my Creedence is my favorite band on this planet, along with Manila Road. So I'm a Fogarty fanboy, but I need I'm brutally honest here. I have the Zombies, the only album I don't like that much. <laughs> Maybe it's the electric drums he was playing on that. I don't know. Yeah, but still, this I mean, if you if you if you buy something on Discogs, something you really want. And then I always check out what does this guy sell for 5 euros or 5 to 10 euros and then and if you see something like this for 1 euro 90 and it's in mint quality, I need it. Yes, I'm with Black Sabbath, Tomorrow's Dream. I don't know, I think if this ever was released with a cover, I think so. But hey, for 2 or 3 euros, uh, it's, it's really looking mint too. A swill, vertical swill, seven inch. You need that. Okay, I have no clue what this is. I will write a review about that. Here's the info from the promotion agency. Uh, Diamond Dogs is the band, and I think it's hardcore or hardcore punk or something. I will write a review. This is why this goes. Oops, upstairs to my computer where I have another turntable. Okay. Some who follow what I am doing uh, or what I am posting on Facebook know why I bought now this this original ARG Records vinyl from Living Death. That's my favorite album, World's Neuroses. And you Americans are English people. Is that correct? World's Neuroses? Or worlds? Isn't, must it not be a world apostrophe or what is it called? Or I don't know the word in English for a... And then the S? Please let me know if this is correct, the world's neuroses. I won't change it on the reissue on Golden Core, but still I'm interested in it. Yeah, the best Living Death album. You can kill me if you like, but that's my personal opinion. This is the first album when they were adult enough to make a perfect album. I got this for my birthday from a very nice colleague from where I usually work when there's no lockdown. <laughs> she found that at home. I haven't listened to it. I fear that I'm not a big fan of that, but hey, I know that this guy at least was a really good musician. Okay, this makes no sense in the video at all. This is a test pressing of an album from the late 80s, I think, that I bought from Holger from Gom Records. And this is a test pressing of uh, Coupe de Grasse 
Coupe de Grasse, uh, uh, I think the album was just named like that. It was a silver album with a blurry band photo on top. And this is one of my favorite later US metal albums. Uh, it reminds me a little of a, um, a less thrashy version of early Death Angel. Uh, but it also has some, yeah, sometimes they have even pop choruses. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's heavy and, and, and dum, 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 uh, everything you need. But it's, it's a weird mix. And yeah, I think it was the small record company that was uh, responsible that they didn't become big at all. I have even the second album of these guys on CD. Yeah, Tox, Prince of Darkness. <laughs> I needed that after I put one of my favorite songs on the Golden Core double CD I did. Uh, the Best and the Rare of Gamma Records is from this album, which I, by the way, don't like too much in, in its entirety. But the song Prince of Darkness, epic metal as its best. I, I'm, I, I'm, I have this in my head since I was working on this compilation, double CD. Now I wanted to have the LP. I have the other Tox album, the blue one here. So this was not really expensive, but I was shocked again. I mean, why is it on Mausoleum? There's so there's several uh, Gamma albums that were also released on Mausoleum, which makes no sense because uh, even back then Europe was already <laughs> really close to each other. So, I mean, today these territorial things are nearly, uh, yeah, ah, okay, forgot, we forgot that, I now have it. Yeah, I wanted to have the original Carries of Steel from Rush, my favorite Rush album. I have it in a German pressing, also very old, I think I got it in the early 80s or so. Uh, we have this, what you see here as a gatefold, was the, the inner sleeve, well, it was printed on the inner sleeve. So now I have an original pressing with that inside as a gatefold. And I played it, some maybe saw it here on uh, with a quick cell phone video that I made from my turntable playing it. This was, by the way, uh, one of the most important albums for Mr. Mark Shelton from Manila Road. And here, the song Necromancer. If not the B-side, this long fountain of Flamnet thing, it was the Necromancer. And if you listen to that song and then you check out early albums like Invasion or Metal from Manila Road, <laughs> you can absolutely hear it. Needed that one. I have part one on vinyl. I have uh, Mother's Pride, the, the EP after this one here. And of course I have the CD version, uh, two in the Japanese CD of this one. I mean, I even play in one of those bands these days, James and Raid, uh, here with Heartlines and only as The Raid. So, yeah, when I saw that for under, I think, around 20 euros and it's mint condition, I needed that. EMI, yes. Yeah, of course, it's Trespass is two times on that. Easy Money is a really great, uh, great song. Telephone Man, because it's Mark Storrs singing from Crocus. Uh, Okay, I haven't heard that. This came today. You see, it's still packed like that. Fargo, an old German band. I, re I think I have... No, I don't have a CD of these guys. This is a band I need to explore still. This was cheap. It looks cool. Franz Car. Uh, sometimes they call it crowd rock, but I don't think so. I, I think it's more good old rock music they do. And here that's cool. This is commercial. Commercials for, uh, yeah, your turntable. <laughs> That's funny. I will do scan that before this went, goes into my collection here. Okay, this needed to be here as a vinyl after I noticed how great that album is on CD. It was pretty cheap. I, it has some, some slight crackles, but it's a live album, though there is no no silence in between the songs, so it make, it's not bad. You you put the record on, it crackles, and then the music starts, and then it crackles again <laughs> when the side A is over. So that's the positive thing about a live album. Same here with Udo Lindenberg, nothing too special for people from outside Germany. Udo Lindenberg is cult, but uh, I bought this album. I have it on CD, but uh, I wanted to have it because Jutta Weinhold from Velvet Viper, from uh, Santiago, from Breslau. 
He, she was uh, uh, in uh, in nineteen seventy nine or eight. I think that's seventy nine. Uh, on this album, at least on two songs and uh, or more. And she's somewhere here. So Yuta, please let me know where are you. We 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 watch. We, we were looking at this photo for some time, and I think it's maybe you might be here. <laughs> so yeah, I've got this one. Another German one you shouldn't be interested in. That's the last album of the band Bub that I really enjoy, a double live LP. Yeah, yeah. I found out that uh, my original gull pressing of Judas Priest's Rocker Roller, my favorite album, is uh, upstairs on my wall, completely destroyed. I, I, I noticed that, that it's hanging, uh, it's hanging there on the wall. And I remember it from uh, where I lived before in 99 and several, I moved pretty often in the 90s. It was always there and now it, it's completely destroyed, so I bought a new one. It's not the original Gull Records uh, version, I noticed that it's over 100 euros here and there. Uh, so it's an American pressing from Viva, or Visa, sorry, and there's a little cutout here. But besides that, it looks perfect, it sounds perfect, I'm happy. Another Fargo one. Uh, usually I wouldn't buy an album with that cover, not happy. <laughs> Not because I don't like uh, what I see, but this usually is AOR stuff. So Fargo was more hard rock, so I hope it still is, even the cover looks like some, uh, yeah. Blondie, I, I, really cheap, it's it's amazing how cheap Blondie albums are. And But the, the cool thing is there's still a merchandise list, so if you want to buy something, let me know, we can order together. Here's a full-size Debbie Harry poster in boxer shorts. <laughs> so let me know, we can order that together uh, at wherever this uh, goes to. Not my favorite Blondie album, but yeah, it was four euros and it is mint and it's still uh, sealed, at least uh, besides that it's open here. So now finally, after I bought the Dick and Alex album, I have Breslau on CD from High Voltage Records since ages. Jutta again here. <laughs> Jutta Weinholz. Here she is. She looks really mean here on this picture. Yeah, because uh, maybe because of the song Hexentanz. <laughs> yeah, now I have it finally also on vinyl. And I noticed that this guy called Zwiebel is also <laughs> on this album, who is also with, uh, on this Dick and Alex album, which I really love. So last one was Cheap too. Uh, I know that it's not a good one. At least I was told several times. Uh, there's so many Wishbone Ash albums that it's hard to keep track of them. But this was also in a gatefold and it was four euros or five at, at this guy. Um, yeah. So I bought it. <sighs> okay, this was the first part. What came in? I don't think I have something. I will check the camera and then we finally can start with. Uh, yeah, the blind date. After this video I need to charge the the Akku, I don't know the word in English, uh, the battery, sorry, the battery of the camera. So I will go on until, I will notice that later for sure, <laughs> uh, the camera dies, okay? So if uh, there won't, it, there might be not a really good end like, hey, see you next time. In this video but I don't care it's just a blind date video so I just start with something and okay let's start today we start here what do we have here okay that's obviously a repressing of uh, Saxon oh yeah I remember I got them all to write a review I think these are the colorful versions yeah this uh, really funny there must there's uh, so we are obviously at my uh, saxon corner sorry saxon corner <laughs> uh, of the new wave of british heavy metal and yeah look at them here this was for sure the first uh, i mean there was already some hints of and signs of sounding more commercial on crusader problem is that uh, crusader has such a great and strong title track that and I love the sweet cover version too, and I think a little bit of what you fancy is cool. Sailing to America was not bad at all. But yeah, this album, I know some love it, and uh, as a kid, when I was a teenager, I really was 
fell in love with that girl here on the cover. She reminds me a little of my very, very first girlfriend. And yeah, yeah, she looked pretty similar. And uh, yeah, but the music, even as a kid, I had some problems with that. I mean, there are some hits today. Broken Heroes was a hit. Uh, there was another one. Rock and Roll Gypsy, of course, is a standard on live shows today. But yeah, I prefer... Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's uh, funny. I remember, just remember that I wear a Saxon shirt here today from my favorite album, which is cool that it's uh, that shirt, because uh, something I'm one of those, only the debut is great. And I don't think so in case of Saxon. My favorite Saxon album is The Power and The Glory. So both of them. <laughs> okay, let's see what we have here. Oh, there's some Tokyo Blade going on here. So that should be what is Bansai Records. Okay, that's weird. I thought they would be on Power Station Records in um, in England. So it says Bansai here. I think this is uh, yeah must be a, a license pressing. I think Bansai was Canada. I think here. Yeah. I'm not too sure. So you you see me like usual. I'm wondering again of what I have here. Yeah, of course uh, this is a classic. Uh, Midnight Rendezvous and still I must say that Tokyo Blade is not in my list of my uh, 20 favorite new wave bridge heavy metal bands and it's just a band that I really like <laughs> but not more. For some reason I have a crush on that Gamma Records album uh, No Remorse which uh, so many hate. I don't know if it's here. It must be here because I had it as a kid, otherwise I couldn't talk about it right now. Uh, Tokyo Blade, this is weird here. The Cave Sessions, this looks also old. Have you seen that before? Oh, it's still it kind of sealed. I shouldn't have put that out. Oh my god, this was a bad idea. Yeah, but I don't find it. Oh, here's another favorite of mine. That's some hate. I love it. Thunderstick, the drummer from Samson, you all know him. And yeah, this is a really a weird band he had uh, with a female singer. She's great, a little... This this whole album is a, a mix of, yeah, heavy rock, uh, New Wave Bridge, heavy metal, and uh, uh, the Rocky Horror Pitch Show, like. Huh? And then these weird sound effects from Mr. Thunderstick, some all the time. Uh, I mean, way too loud in that production, to be honest. <laughs> so you always you get a shock when you hear it. It's even in really mellow parts uh, when she's singing like an angel. <laughs> so that's uh, absolutely funny. So, but if you look at this album cover today, you would think, oh, that must be early black metal or something. Or at least something that reminds of Witchfinder General. No, that's a really positive sounding album, I would say. And uh, yeah, and another turnaround, uh, the long song on side A. It ended up on uh, a million of my mixtapes, mix CDRs from my car. Uh, even at my day job where I work, I have <laughs> um, some mix CDs and this song is, I played there. And it's always funny when the customers sit, stand there and like it. And then come the sound so one of those sound effects in another turnaround. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are wondering about that. Yeah, and to show you that I'm pretty complete, here's the other one. Feel Like Rock and Roll, which was an EP. Yeah, it's maybe not everybody's cup of tea, even if you are into New Wave with Chevy Metal. But I love that stuff. I love stuff that is different. Uh, yeah, not, it, it must be still in the field of traditional hard rock, traditional heavy metal or proto metal or whatever. But within that spectrum, I love it when it's special. I think you understand what I want to say with that. Okay, let's grab here. We never were there. What do we have here? Okay, that's interesting. Wild Rex Records. Arcane. I think that's one of those 
cult Texas metal bands. I know that it's that way. Oh, there's a lyric sheet in that. I know 100% that uh, I had the CD of that album way earlier than this vinyl. I mean, this vinyl is in my possession since ages, but the CD is even older. It, I had the CD when it was released, I'm pretty sure, because uh, uh, when was that thing here? 1990, yeah, there was a record store in my hometown that called Music Pool and I bought the CD there as an import and I love it. Uh, I think this album, I saw that not cheap, you can't find that really cheap, but uh, for a good price at least, uh, yeah, late 90s or so, when before the collector boom started and Biscox of course destroyed a lot so even somebody everybody uh, nobody is selling uh, albums for cheap anymore because he has a look of what's going on what do we have here oh that's the first Arnold Zane EP the original version on uh, Metal Blade Records there's a lot going on here what's that okay that's yeah that's the Metal Blade pressing but then we have stuff in here. Oh, that's fucking cool. That's fucking cool. And Enigma Records distribution flyer. So we have Warlord here, we have Bitch here, we have Metal Massacre here. Then there's a lot of punk stuff. Huskadu. Oh, Exciter, uh, uh, Heavy Metal Maniac. Yeah, this was an important uh, distributor in the USA back then. If you look at all that, the Vandals and stuff. Yeah, and then we have, of course, the. Uh, the lyric sheet for this Armored Saint EP. Oh, look at this here. Metal Massacre 2 and Demon Flight. Oh. Yeah, I, would, I would wear something like that as a t-shirt to be honest. I love it so much. I don't, I hope the camera is still rolling. I, I knew that I have this EP because uh, I played it a while ago but I didn't look inside. So I'm really happy that there is some cool stuff in it. So we are obviously here at uh, letter A of uh, US metal. So I guess there will be more, more armored. Oh, this is a repress here. Molten metal. And I kept that sealed. I could open it now and we can have a look together what's inside, but there was already so much cool stuff inside the original that it may... I keep that sealed. That makes no sense. Yeah, of course we have Rising Fear here. Uh, what is that? Oh, yeah, I love that. Almost Red Moon. Fools are never alone. There's some... Yeah, it's pretty cheap on CD these days. Uh, there was a reissue that obviously didn't sell too much, so... It became a cheap CD now. <laughs> mm. Not talking about the first one from High Voltage. I mean, I uh, talk about a later version. And yeah, this is, I mean, this also looks more heavy than it is. But uh, yeah, the, and their best song is not on it. Because this was on Metal Massacre, the song Fear No Evil. This is a goddamn hit. Fear, fear no evil, fight for the right. Yeah, yeah. This is... Uh, this should have made them big, this song. Unbelievable. It, it, once you hear it, you will never ever forget it. This is not on this EP, but here my favorite is the title track, uh, Fools Are Never Alone. Because fools, you will never know. That's, uh, yeah, some cool American hard rock. And with that, US metal. <laughs> it seems like it. It's pretty early stuff, I think. Uh, I think it's uh, 81 or 82. Or it doesn't say it. It's not on here. I'm sorry. I can't say. When was it recorded? Oh yeah, 82. I'm really good. This sounds like 81 or 82. It's no way. If it would be later, you, you even in 1984, you would have said, "Oh, these guys sound a little dated." But uh, for 82, it's really heavy shit. I would say. What do we have here with A? Where does my, my collection starts with? Hey? 
Angels. Angelus? <laughs> Is that American? Have you seen that before? Mystic Records. Oh my god, there were the mentors were on Mystic Records. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously a cutout and I hopefully got for cheap. Yeah. yeah, I oh yeah, it's the logo of I remember this logo from a, a mentors EPs that's in here. Uh, with going through your pores and stuff on it. Uh, it was get to die, get to die, die to... It's, it's, it's an EP and I, it's funny that this label did some real heavy metal here. Nasty girls, you want me to love you. Okay, this doesn't sound too heavy. So I don't expect the speed metal here. What's here next? Okay, that's some newer pressing assassin. Hmm. Nuclear War Now Productions, okay. Okay, bonus 12 inch for Snake Pit magazine. Ah, okay, 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 I remember now, okay. I uh, don't need no explanation. This came with uh, Snake Pit magazine and I remember now. Attila, Is, I hope this is the Americans and not the Dutch guys. That I, no, that's for sure the American Attila. Also, Unfortunately, a corner is missing here. I think this was reissued, I think it was Heaven and Hell Records. And I'm not too sure, I need to check that, but I like that one, definitely. Uh, yeah, should, I should listen to the vinyl one day again. I, I, I love A, it makes it fun here to browse through that. So, oh, here we have Arcade again. Next one is... Okay, there are two. No, it's just one. I have only one at war. <laughs> LP. And god damn, this is just an EP. Now, I'm really... Hmm. I, I had the order to kill as a kid. <laughs> I played the shit out of that. And I remember that I had also had the, the next one. Uh, Retali... Radiable Strike. I had that too. I'm, I'm wondering why there's just this EP now left. This is one of these moments where I think Felix, the singer from Crematory, you are a lucky bastard because I once gave you 50 albums or so <laughs> when the CD was out. I have everything of these guys on CD, the, uh, pressings from New Renaissance and of course from High Roller Records. So I guess I need to get the original ones, at least Order to Kill. I really love that album. And it was horrible back then when uh, everybody thought, oh, these are Nazis, because they had this intro. And uh, yeah, there was some bad reviews because of that. And, but if you, <laughs> there was no internet back then, but goddamn, Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS, is a kind of comedy, hardcore movie. <laughs> From the USA, so it's some about uh, a movie, and it's so. Nah, yeah. okay. You know, these are crazy times. Oh no, violence in heavy metal. Uh, I don't know what what was going on back then. Now we uh, then we had Cannibal Corps and everything was cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's go a little avalanche, alien, weird stuff here. Oh, there's a whole bunch of Anna Cruises now. So let's go, let's go from this side. Oh yeah, blah blah. I just, that's funny, I really listened to both albums. Recently, especially this one. Uh, and I noticed again, I love them both. This is a little heavier, <laughs> a lot heavier. And I hate the production of this one. It sounds like recorded in a, somewhere in a, in a big garage with the micros, uh, one mile away from the band or so. If this would be more direct, a song like Soldiers of Fortune would be a, would be a, even more of a killer. So, so it's just really good. And uh, yeah, this one was heavier, of course. I think it was, yeah, it was produced by Eric Meyer from Dark Angel, but this should not be the reason why it's so heavy. And I think the singer was from, <sighs> yeah. The singer was from another band with A. Uh, 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 you can help me now here, yeah, please. Um, <laughs> Goddamn, a band with A. Uh, Screams from the Grave is one song of these guys. 
Ugh. Okay, maybe later. <laughs> okay, before I check if the cutter is still rolling. <laughs> One of the few really interesting and at least, and yeah, even, yeah, let's say good albums from Ingo Novotny's Metal Enterprises, the Satan of Germany's heavy metal scene, the worst record uh, label owner on this planet ever. <laughs> yeah, he, I, I'm a huge fan of one of his bands, not his bands, he licensed that, Hammer's Rule. But the second album was already some weird, weird stuff, I guess a pre-production that was pressed and then called Spontaneous Human Combustion. I don't think it's a real album, to be honest. Black Virgin was a real album, I think they had this even out in uh, on another label somewhere, but yeah, that's uh, at least that's the German pressing and uh, yeah, it is cult and it's not bad to call it cult because it's really cool. Baron Cross, we don't need that. That's Christian heavy rock, I would say. So let's see what we have here. What is that? It's still Baron Cross. I have a huge Baron Cross collection. Black Knight is a repress. Oh, yeah, you guys remember this on Mausoleum here, Black Lace, Unlaced. I think they had two albums on vinyl. I just have one. Mm. I, um, when we did, when I was in contact with the owner from the new owner of the rights of Mausoleum, uh, I was so new with Golden Core still that I had not enough experience. I should have uh, licensed twice as many much albums and I should have done this. Now other co uh, companies know this guy too <laughs> and uh, yeah there's now you, I guess you have to pay now more than we had back then when this was still new. Oh a sealed version of Banshee and it's not a new one. Oh no it's a, it's a barcode so can't be an original. The original must be here somewhere. And here it is. No, it's all over the barcode. What is going on here with my Banshee guys? Okay. Obviously, I uh, my uh, original version of pressing is somewhere. <laughs> so, but it's still there. I just had it uh, in my hands not too long ago. Maybe it's in there on the wrong spot, but this can't be an original. Because, a barcode? When, when did that start with a barcode? So let's see. Let's see what's going on here. It says 1988. Did they work with barcodes in 1988? Okay, then. It's Roadrunner, it's a, yeah, Metal Blade was distributed, or Roadrunner were licensing uh, uh, Metal Blade titles here for Europe, that's true. So this means that both of them are original pressings and they already used barcodes back in 88. I, I can't remember that. I hope I don't say anything wrong, but uh, yeah, obviously it is that way. Okay, Abattoir. Now I see the album I was talking about. Okay, I think it was long enough here today. And it looks like I need to, uh, I need to, uh, yeah, clean that up here a little. It doesn't, I, I, I don't like it when they are like that, you know, it's, it's, ah, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, these need to go inside the collection. Uh, some will be, I will listen to them a second time before I do so. Yeah, and yeah. So, with my little cat, I say thanks for watching. I thought the battery is over, but goddamn, this video was just too long, and the camera said beep beep. You talk too much. So yeah. So thanks for watching this uh, video. I will have the rest of my beer now with the cat. No, I don't share it with her, of course. <laughs> it's uh, I don't share it with her. Uh, but she enjoys it when I'm in this room. She even enjoys loud music and that's totally not typical for a cat. And I know that she's not deaf at all, <laughs> so that's really funny. So yeah, see you next time.
evil cat. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.